PL over PR alpha beta. And then you get the psi terms. Large psi terms. Okay, and now it's very simple. Uh, one can show from this equation uh, that A is equal to zero and B is equal to zero. These are the two laws which you find. A is equal to zero from the translational invariance. We, we substitute that. And we, instead of the vector field psi, psi we take uh, the the frame, psi alpha, uh, E alpha, which since it's valid for each vector field and the next space vector field which we have available is always the frame. So we take the frame for that purpose. And then we find that, um, so first I would, would like to evaluate B equals to zero. So, uh, let us take B equal to zero, B e equal to zero, and that is for the psi, we take the E alpha. These are for vector fields, we can always evaluate it with respect to one of the vector fields. Then we find that T alpha <coughs> is equal to E alpha in L. This is this piece, and now we have these pieces minus E alpha in D e psi A in parentheses times E L over D e psi A. This is the piece with the first derivative, and now the piece uh, without derivative, minus parentheses E alpha in psi, which E L over E psi, psi A, also I, A. Okay, and then we get three non-minimal pieces, which are usually not interesting for us because we are interested in the minimal coupling. Those three non-minimal pieces which are not interested. And, and this is the first result which we find. So the, the tensor, which is defined as a variation of derivative with respect to the uh, co-frame, is the tensor, which is according to Noether's theorem, identical to this one, if it's minimal coupling. And this is a tensor which we know from special relativity as a canonical energy momentum tensor. So this B equals zero gives us the information that this variation derivative to the co-frame is really the same as the canonical tensor we have from, from special relativity. However, I mean, this is a canonical tensor already in, 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 in gauge theory. It's for variable derivatives and everything. But if you take this then in the limit of special relativity, this is just the canonical tensor which you start in special relativity. And so this is uh, the, the first uh, uh, result. And the second result is that we take A uh, e equals to zero. A equals to zero. Now we take this piece. Then we find uh, that D, covariant exterior derivative, here, of T alpha is equal to E alpha, uh, parenthesis E alpha in, this is now the torsion T, one has to be a little bit careful, T beta, which calligraphy. Plus E alpha in R beta 
Atacama, which cloudy graphic has beta gamma. Well, last uh, pieces, which I call the S, which vanish on the shell, vanish on the grid. When the field equation for matter is uh, fulfilled, this is what is usually called in the shell or on shell. So on shell, on the mass shell, this vanish, and so um, we have the, the, the greater identity uh, for the energy momentum tensor. So the tensor which we identified as a canonical tensor fulfills this Müller identity and this is different from special relativity because we have here a torsion piece and here we have a curvature piece. And this curvature piece we know from general relativity already this type of, uh, this is what is called a uh, curvature type spin, this is called historically what was first thought by Matisson and Papapetro. Papapetro force. If you go in three dimensions, this is the stress tensor times the torsion tensor, which describes dislocation. So, dislocation times stress, there is a force density in dislocation theory, which is called Peach Köhler, according to the people who introduced this formula uh, in, uh, in three dimensional dislocation theory. If you have a dislocation line, you can describe it by a singular torsion distribution. And this singular uh, uh, torsion distribution, dislocation, um, if it's put in a stress field, then uh, perpendicular to the dislocation line in the stress field, you get a force, and it's just called the atrial force. So these are things which are known in physics, in three or four dimensional physics. So this is that. And, and um, when I um, told you about Carton and how he developed his theory, he assumed that this is zero. And this is inconsistent. And for that reason, uh, the Carton, the original Carton uh, theory went into difficulties and uh, Carton never came back to it uh, because he saw that something was sort of not working at the time. And this, uh, it was pointed out by So we know that, and these are forces which we know, of course, from physics. I mean, if we are in electromagnetism, uh, then this would be the current, and this would be the field strength. So this is a Lorentz type force. So these are Lorentz type forces, which which have a, which are present and which come out here uh, as the uh, uh, very natural consequence of the neutral theory. Now we apply uh, the neutral theorem to translational invariance. And, and translational invariance here translated into the lead derivative, which, which transports the connector, the, the Lagrangian, into a neighboring point with respect to this uh, small translation psi. <laughs> now we uh, want to have a local Lorentz rotation. No local Lorentz invariance. This is S O13. <coughs> and, and this is of course we know in the local Lorentz invariance, the variation of the theta alpha is in the Lorentz uh, um, group is now parameterized by two by a matrix omega minus conventional omega beta alpha times theta beta. It's a transformation of the co-frame at the Lorentz transformation. And then the, the connection, the variation of a connection is a tensor. In contrast to a connection, the variation of a con connection is a tensor. And if you compute it, it's just the covariant you see at the derivative so these are the Lorentz transformation, of course, and the matter field transforms in the Lorentz transformation. We already know this. 
by using this minus omega, alpha, beta, times this representation matrices, which we call O, uh, o alpha, beta, up A and down capital B times C, B. So this is very simple. This is a, a Lorentz transformation of the co-frame. This is a Lorentz transformation of the connection. This is a Lorentz transformation of the psi. So all we have to do is to substitute it into our formula y, right? Here, we introduce this. This is the relevant <coughs> uh, the, the, the surface, and, and you can substitute it, and immediately you see that the variation of the Lorentz uh, of the um, sorry of the Lagrangian form is minus omega alpha beta parenthesis times theta alpha stretch alpha beta anti-symmetric with respect to alpha and beta plus covariant derivative of calibrated S alpha beta plus our, our representation matrices rho alpha beta capital A up and capital B down times C B which partial L over partial B say C psi A parentheses that's all and uh, is the boundary term plus boundary term, which, which is very interesting. And this uh, Lorentz transformation has to go to zero. Okay. So we have here um, that uh, there is something wrong in my manuscript. This rho um, I think this has to be a um, this has to be a variation of the relative. Sorry, please. As you can see from there, uh, I cannot see it right now, but this is the case. So um, you, you, you uh, take it, you have D S alpha beta minus the plus theta alpha, which P beta anti-symmetric with respect to alpha and beta is equal to this representation matrix minus rho alpha beta a b times c b which and now we have here a variation derivative of l with respect to psi a and on shell in the field equation of matter is fulfilled on shell this is zero Okay, so we have this law, which is the uh, um, angular momentum law in Carré uh, gauge theory. This is the angular momentum law. I don't call it conservation law. Angular, it's an identity. Angular momentum law. And it's not only spin, because here is a spin, but this is the divergence of the orbital piece. So it, it tells you that the total angular momentum fulfills this. And this is the energy momentum law, of course. This one divergence energy momentum law. It's, a, it's an identity, a little identity, but in this form which I uh, uh, framed 
it's only valid on shell. If, if it's off shell, we have to add this piece, and here we have also this piece, which, which uh, you can take, for instance, from our published work. Um, okay. Uh, so, uh, yes, this is this. Now uh, we come to the field equations. Now, but first we have to take the gravitational excitations, section 5.4, gravitational excitations. No. Excitations. Uh, neuter identities for the gravitational recursion. And neuter. Here we had neuter identities for the matter part. We found the angular momentum and the energy momentum law. But the same, um, we have prepared the Lagrangian such that if we now just drop the Psi, and the Lagrangian is just depending on the co-frame, torsion, and curvature. And we can um, just take this formula which we already have in order to derive our uh, corresponding uh, and neutral identities. Okay, what are the excitations? We, we, we just, uh, we have a Lagrangian, the gravitational Lagrangian, which we call V, is V depending on theta alpha, on P alpha, and on R alpha beta, and we define um, like in electrodynamics as sort of placeholders, the excitation two forms. So H alpha, H is the name, by definition minus EV over the torsion. This is a translational excitation. Translational excitation. And the H alpha beta, the same with respect to the rotations, minus dB over the R alpha beta. As you see, I mean, if you have the Lagrangian explicitly, then you know how it depends on torsion and curvature. And if it's, for instance, linear in curvature, then dB over dR is just a constant. If the that doesn't depend on the torsion, this is zero. And if it depends quadratically on the torsion, this H is just proportional to the torsion. So um, we can develop now the general formalism by using these excitations um, as unknowns. And as soon as we have specified the Lagrangian later on in discussing uh, uh, specific examples, then we can just substitute the excitations which we compute by partial derivative of the Lagrangian. This is a very simple procedure um, um, to, to be introduced. And these are two forms. These excitations are always two forms. And now we introduce um, the gravitational energy momentum and spin. Gravitational energy momentum we call small t <coughs> and spin, gravitational spin, which we call small s alpha beta. And they are defined t alpha is by definition partial v over partial theta alpha and the gravitational spin small s alpha beta is by definition partial derivative of v 
with respect uh, to the gamma, gamma alpha beta. <coughs> and now you uh, apply uh, this formula y, which we saved here for, uh, for uh, with these definitions. Apply y. respect to theta and gamma, <coughs> theta alpha and gamma alpha beta. Can you see here? Yes. Then uh, you find that the variational of V is just substituted in, in, in this formula which I gave. Is variation of theta alpha which parenthesis dv over d theta alpha plus covariant derivative of dv over dt alpha portion and a, a, a corresponding term for gamma plus variation of gamma alpha beta is parenthesis which parenthesis theta alpha which partial e v over the torsion eta and <coughs> isometrized between uh, with respect to alpha and beta plus and now we have the normal is D of partial D over partial R alpha beta. Okay. And this has to be zero. This uh, surface term um, uh, doesn't play a role. And then we, see, we can take that the variation derivative of V with respect to theta is equal. Now we have to memorize our uh, definitions. The partial derivative with respect to the torsion is a translational <coughs> excitation. And here the rotational excitation. So we have minus covariant derivative of H alpha plus T alpha. And the corresponding formula for gamma, variational derivative of V with respect to gamma alpha beta is equal minus D H alpha beta plus, is it plus? Yes, small s alpha <coughs> beta. So I think uh, perhaps you can. Um, appreciate that uh, this is now we have already explicitly the variational derivative of the gravitational Lagrangian with respect to our variables. We have just um, H alpha beta, and here we have these two. Um, now we again apply uh, the Noether theorem, and we can take Noether, and we find then. In the formula number um, y, we find that T alpha is by definition uh, is identified as E alpha in V plus E alpha in torsion T beta, which H beta plus E alpha in R beta gamma which H beta gamma. And this, uh, uh, the formula for S 
small s, the spin of the gravitational field, even looks, uh, it's not a definition, it's, it's, it's the outcome of the, this was wrong, it's not a definition, it's the outcome of the neutral procedure, uh, is minus theta alpha which h beta anti symmetry There is only a translation of piece in this field, uh, which we understand very well. Well, this has to be the case. So this is a gravitational spin, and this is a gravitational energy momentum. And we have now already the general form of this of this quantities. Okay, and I can just write down then the field equations, section 5.5, it's just two more minutes. <coughs> I don't need much space now because clearly in the field equation we have now the variation derivative of the Lagrange, of the gravitational Lagrangian uh, with respect to theta and gamma. We have these expressions, T and S are identified, and now we have to put it equal to minus the variational derivative of the metal Lagrangian. But the variational derivative of the metal Lagrangian is just the energy momentum tensor. And the variational derivative with respect to the connection is the spin. So we have immediately identified the field equation, section 5.5. Five. The two gravitational field equations, the two gravitational field equations. Just, uh, I just have to take what I, what I wrote down already. Covariant derivative of the translational um, uh, excitation minus gravitational energy momentum is equal to the matter energy momentum, the <coughs> alpha, and covariant exterior <coughs> derivative of the rotational momentum of the Lorentz uh, um, um, excitation alpha beta minus the spin of the gravitational field alpha beta is equal to the spin of the metal field. These are my two field equations. As soon as I specify a Lagrangian V, I can, by partial derivatives, determine these um, two forms H by partial differentiating with respect to torsion and curvature, substitute here, and T and S are known, um, because here we have V,